I'm English without realizing I make a lot of really rude comments okay. and really rude <laughs> jokes. But another thing the English do is they drink a lot. It's very, very normal at the end of the working day to go to the pub, have a couple pints of beer and play some pool. And that's not really in, in Canadian culture. So we really wanted to kind of integrate this whole pool culture. The VVS has like become this thing which is quite cool. People really like the whole culture of it. In the UK, every single university will have something called a student fight night, student boxing. Everyone seems so excited to go to college in the US. I feel like in Canada, Canada, it's, it's just another stage of school. The company I worked for was called Wasserman Boxing. And if any of your viewers watch boxing, they will probably know who Callis Allen is. He's a guy I work for, big promoter. With the celebrity boxing, they're sh boxers. They do it for the hype or for whatever. I told you I worked at a concrete yard. Yeah. And you could smell the smoke in Orangeville. There was wildfires coming all the way from Alberta, traveling across three, four provinces okay. you could take a pill that made you disgusted by all desserts in the world okay would you take it all unhealthy food i don't see studying at u of t as hard work really doesn't really matter like a lot of people are worried about the distance right yeah. but it's more direction you, talking to this like if you're turning your head it's not going to pick up anything okay so so that's the main thing however you want it whatever's comfortable to keep it from you yeah okay and that's about it Okay, and also because I just want to ask, I'm English, yeah. So I, 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 without realizing, I make a lot of really rude comments, okay, and really rude <laughs> jokes. I don't want to like say anything I shouldn't say, or no I wouldn't say anything offensive. I'm yeah, not, but I just, yeah, I, I, I swear a lot without realizing. That's fine. So, I bleep it all out. Okay, okay, that's okay. perfect. Yeah, cool. no worries. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the VOV podcast, Voices of Vic. Today I am here, the legend himself. <laughs> You call yourself CEO of VPS? What's your what's your title? Founder? Uh, founder, founder and president. Founder and president yeah. of the Vic Pool Society. I'm here with Theo Sokol. L last name. How do you pronounce the last name? Sokol. You got it Sokol. right. Sokol. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, Theo, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. It's uh, it's uh, I've been like really looking forward forward to this. For, we, we've been planning it for a while. Yeah, it's been in the uh, in the making. That's right, and it's uh. Collab of the century, maybe? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. The two, I don't know. I feel like these are the two fastest growing. I wouldn't say this was a club, but kind of almost institutions. Institutions. In I Vic. like that word. That's a good <laughs> word. So yeah, hopefully uh, this gets a lot of eyeballs. Why don't you tell people about about the society, the, the club, the institution that you the run? The institution, the empire. Yeah. The empire, that's right. It's funny. It was like the VPS, Victoria Falls Society. Um... It was a club that me and my mate Jaeger started yep. because I was saying to Carter before this podcast started, I'm very English, I'm going to swear loads or whatever. <laughs> but another thing the English do is they drink a lot yep. and it's very, very normal at the end of the working day to go to the pub, have a couple pints of beer and play some pool. And that's not really in, or at least from what I witnessed in my first year in Canadian culture. Yep. Um, so we really wanted to kind of integrate this whole pool culture and That's we awesome. wanted to start that because it didn't really exist. Um, so we started that and we had monthly sessions, which is free and the university funds. Um, and we've, it's been very successful. We asked for, we've asked for more funding for this year, which we think we'll get. And we've been in talks with lots of companies about sponsorship. Um, we had a great company the other day we spoke to. Have you have you heard of Zbiotics? I have not. Okay, Zbiotics is a startup in yep. San Francisco. Okay. And basically, my science is sh <laughs> but my I spoke to them and they said to me, when you drink lots of alcohol, it breaks down the cells in your body, which is what gives you a hangover. And Zbiotics is this protein you take before you drink, and it prevents these cells being broken down. So it's effectively a hangover cure. Got it. I'm not sure if it works. Yep. It sounds great. Yeah. And it's grown quite quickly. Sponsored um, by Z Bio Six. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, but so we've spoken to people like them looking for sponsorships, and we're going to see if that comes through. And um, but yeah, that's essentially what the VPS is. It's just an integration of English pool culture. I find that's that's cool. U of T. That's awesome. And Igor, he played on the hockey team with me. That's how I know him. Oh yeah. So so we play hockey together. But where's where's he from again? He's he's oh he's complicated ancestry. He's like <laughs> Ukrainian, R Russian Ukrainian, but grew up in Toronto, Indiana, and Montreal. 
So he's he's kind of from everywhere. Yeah. Um, he's an awesome guy, though. How did you he's get so to know funny. him? Uh, I met Yegor. My when I first came to Vic, I came with my. I, I got here. I came with my dad, and my dad said you should go to all the orientation stuff or whatever. And orientation, in in my opinion, like the organized stuff by Vic, was a bit. <laughs> um, I didn't want to do the karaoke. I yeah. didn't want to do capture the flat or any of that. It was just like <laughs> I just always a bit cringe. Um, <laughs> That's fair. And, <laughs> That's fair. Shout out uh, to all the first years in orientation right now. No, no, you'll love it. I'm sure it's really good now. But. It, <laughs> Anyway, I met I met Yegor then, and I think one day we just went, screw this, let's just go get, let's just go grab a beer. Yeah. And instantly I knew he would be the person to start the integration of British pool yep. into into U of T with, um, because he really likes playing pool and he was up for a pint and uh, yeah. That's awesome. He all the time had a group of like seven girls there to watch him play. Yeah, Everyone he's, sees he's, in the he's crowd. A, I, I live with him now. Yeah. And. I've, I've, I've just become single and I'm not thinking of like doing anything yet, but I just know whenever I go clubbing and whatever, he's just beautiful kind of perfect skin and whatever. <laughs> it's just, I'm always going to be just kind of on the si- sidelined whenever I'm out with him, which I'm, I'm slightly worried about. <laughs> I don't and know, I know that's si- going to, he's going to have a low key kind of uh, satisfaction you pride could, about that. You could have your, the best wingman ever. You should see it as that as your teammate. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. But yeah, we're gonna. I think he's playing hockey again this year, so that yeah. should be fun. Um, what talk about the process of actually getting your club considered to be like an official society, an official levy, whatever it is, at Victoria College? Like, there's a whole process you have to go through. Yeah, it was fairly easy. So what we did was we 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 just applied online. There was an application form. And we had to name we had to name a society with like ten board mem- ten board members or whatever or ten roles and I think we made most of them up. Okay, uh, but they've been say. officialized now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what we did, and it was it wasn't too complicated. Getting funding was a bit more annoying because yeah. we had to agree to a whole bunch of things. Um, but yeah. We need the funding because then we don't have to charge membership fees or anything. That's, that's great. That's interesting why they would make you have so many people on a board to start something like that. Like, why do you think that you and Yegor can't just go to them and say, listen, we're going to run this thing. Here's our plan. This, yeah. These eight people that you want us to have aren't really going to add anything. We can do it ourselves. Yeah. I'm not saying that your team isn't no, no, good. No, no, no. Like, I, I, know, I know you have a bunch I, of... I, I get what you mean. Yeah. Um, and now we have a team of... We have a team of about 10 um and all of them are do a really great job yeah um but initially we didn't need a team of 10 so i know what you mean yeah um i think it's just so that all the clubs like anyone has to be able to have a role at them okay. or have the opportunity to have a role of them at, if they apply and if there are only two positions that's like extremely unlikely right because yeah and myself aren't going to give up our roles right um so I think that's probably the thinking behind it. Just kind of inclusivity. I guess it's just getting more people involved in the community. Yeah. Can you say anything about what you had to, I guess, kind of agree to for the funding? Because that's uh, a big reason that I did not want to register this myself. Yes. Because I could have. But the restrictions, I don't know what they are. But I, I was kind of afraid. I was worried that it was going to impede me from talking about the stuff I want to talk about yeah with, with people so yeah. like what kind of restrictions are they imposing on so you? they we can't charge membership fees which we don't want to do anyway yeah um we can't have a bank account so effectively we can't try and turn into a like a social club but like a business social club yeah. and make any money yeah um all profit we make so if we get sponsors that's to get back into society like i can't get a salary or wait not that I would anyway. It would yeah, be about yeah, yeah, hundred dollars yeah. over a semester. Yeah. But and then there's annoying stuff like you can't. Not annoying. I understand it. Um, but they're very strict with drinking and stuff. Um, so you can't, you can't really drink at your events. Or like um, advertise the drinking. At yeah, all. you can't do any of that. Yeah. Uh, no drugs and no. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I see why with the podcast it would be pretty annoying. Yeah. To, They'd be quite strict on that, I'd imagine. Especially, yeah, like even with the 
not that this has made any money i'll be completely honest mm. but eventually if mm. if the ball gets rolling here yeah and it's linked to victoria college then i'm f-ed. yeah because now they're into my my earnings for my youtube account it's yeah. a whole mess yeah um so that would be interesting and also just the topics that we talk about like i don't feel I, I ask guests sometimes if there's anything that they don't want to talk about before we start. I didn't mm. ask you that. I feel like I we could have a pretty, I can talk about whatever. yeah, I'm we could have a pretty open easy. discussion. Right. Um, but I wouldn't want there to be a conversation that we have. And then Vic comes to me and say, we're going to pull your funding right now because yeah. this is not what we agreed to yeah. let you do. Um, but no, that's interesting. I think that you're still doing a really good job running the, the society, the Instagram accounts popping off. I see it. Yeah, it's it's grown sevenfold over the last month. Awesome. It's kind of we've we've like introduced this VPS eleven thing. Yeah. So we're trying to kind of I say an empire, it's not an empire. How do you branch that out? Like how did that go from how do you go from pool to soccer in the same thing? I thought to myself that the VVS has like become this thing which is quite cool. Yeah. And people really like the whole culture of it. Yeah. And per session we can only have ten people or whatever. And I think a lot more people wanted to get involved and a lot of people wanted to go for the vibe but not for the pool yeah so we've tried to branch out into other things and initially we've only branched down to the soccer which is the vps 11. yeah um but we have some other ideas in the running as well anything which, you can share with us oh, i anything guess you okay, can the one the one i've been thinking about a lot and i'm not like 100 percent sure it could happen because it would be quite difficult but basically in the uk every single university will have something called a student fight night yeah student boxing yeah um in canada there are a lot of stricts on that yeah so you can't do that through the university and i think if you wanted to you'd have to have access to a promoter's license yep. a boxing Probably. promoter's license which no student in canada would have because none of them worked in boxing yeah but i've worked in boxing in the uk yeah so i think i might have access to a promoter's license here that could be which awesome. would mean i could start you know, quote unquote, VPS box, yeah. which would be a student fight night. And That's I think cool. that would be awesome. I think people would love it. I, I agree. There's something, there's something raw about just two, two dudes going in the ring, beat each other up. And that's like, yeah, it's, is it a, bo- it's a boxing thing. It's yeah, not, it's a boxing thing. Like that's, that's, you know, that's my niche. That's why I've, I've done work in before. Yeah. Um, so I know how the industry works really well. Yeah. Um, and I would know the right people to get it off the ground. That would be, it would be interesting. It, it is kind of very opposite to university, I feel, especially in Canada. Yeah, it's very, it's very British and very un-Canadian. Yeah, I feel like the culture in, in schools in this country, it's kind of soft to a degree. I feel like when you go down to the States and you see all the crazy stuff that they do at colleges, it's, it's a real fun looking environment. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know about it. I've never been to a college in the States, obviously. But it just, it doesn't really, everyone seems so excited to go to college in the U.S. Yeah. I feel like in Canada, it's, it's just another stage of school. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think, I think it's, I think you're right. I think in, I'm not sure about the U.S., yeah. but certainly in the U.K., it's like very, you know, they don't call it orientation, they call it freshers. Freshers. And freshers is just clubbing every single night for two, three weeks. Yeah. And they will, and the drinking age there is 18, it's not 19, like you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. So everyone is getting off their face yeah um for the first three weeks and then even after that it's 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 just partying 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 and a lot of people that's a nice thing about going to canada it's like when you study you actually feel like you're learning and you're studying and it's very productive yeah. but you i do also sometimes miss just like being able to party and do nothing the social aspect of, of all of it yeah, yeah. the social aspect of uk universities for me is like unmatched for sure when so go, i'll ask you what brought you to canada uh, what made you want to come to U of T of so, all places? Yeah, a bunch of things. Um, my mom was born in Canada. She left when she was very young, but it just meant that the tuition fees were actually cheaper than they were in the UK. Got it. it probably balances out with flights and stuff. But in the UK, you can not you can do all these different modules in Canada. So you could do a major and two minors or whatever, plus individual modules in other courses. Yeah. Whereas in the UK, it's very, very like... Um, there's not a much choice in what you can do. So it will literally, if you do French, you can only study French modules and it has to be very specific modules. I see. Whereas in Canada, you have this great choice, which is really cool. Got it. And I also thought, um, I, came when I, was, I came over when I was 19. 
to Canada. I also thought to myself, my parents are still young. I haven't got a family. This is like the only time in my life where I can live abroad and be totally selfless, yep. uh, selfish even. Um, so yeah, that was why. Makes sense. What are you studying? Uh, poli sci. Poli sci. Yeah, and African studies. How's, how, and African studies. And African studies. What? The niche mix. <laughs> what got you into that? Um, I had no intention of doing it. Yeah. But you know, I was talking about all these different modules you can do. And in my first year, I came over and I was like, I want to try so many different things out. I'm going to try film. I'm going to try sociology. I did, I did a course on sex. I did a sex module. Yeah. And I was, I was like, I'm going to do an African studies module. And I had this unbelievable professor. For me, best professor at U of T that yeah. I met. Uh, yeah. Dr. Professor Lewin from South Africa, wrote yep. speeches for Nelson Mandela. Really? Um, and yeah, she was an amazing teacher. I was that's like, cool. I'm going to do, do a second major in this. That's cool. Um, it's good. So you're, let's, let's fast forward here. It's 2020, 2026. Yeah. All right. You just graduated. Theo Sokol right on the degree. <laughs> you walk out with your poli sci and African studies major, African studies, <laughs> whatever yeah. it is. Where are you going from there? Uh, what's the plan? What's the long-term goal plan? here? And I've just sold the VPS for multi-million pounds. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Um, and you're fleeing, you're hiding from Victoria College because <laughs> they're after you for the money. Um, I'll probably go back to Europe. Yep. I love living in Canada. Canada's an awesome country, but I feel like people just leave because it gets too cold. Yeah. Um, like yeah. for me, when I got here, it's funny because we're sitting here now and it's 30 degrees Celsius, right. like plus 30. In like last year, February, when it got to minus 30, I just couldn't physically bear that. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I'll go back to Europe. Missing the rain. Yeah. Um, and then I'll probably try and go into the sports industry. Cool. Uh, I've done this work in boxing, which I love. Um, maybe go into football, maybe stay in boxing. You're talking to Arib about you went to a DAZN event, is that right? Yeah, so I did. I, the company I worked for was called Wasserman Boxing. And if any of your viewers watch boxing, they will probably know who Callis Allen is. He's a guy I work for, big promoter. Used to be the biggest European promoter, but now it's probably Eddie Hearn and Frank okay. Warren. Um, and he also started with KSI and with Mams Taylor, Misfits Boxing. Okay. So I was doing the Misfits boxing with all these KSI fights and helping, uh, working on the uh, uh, Tommy Fury KSI fight, which is coming up and yeah. doing all of that. Um, and then also on the traditional boxing stuff, which I prefer, yeah. um, but I enjoy both. And that was, you know, I was doing shows in Edinburgh, Newcastle. I've done shows in Berlin, Cologne, Germany, uh, Denmark. Yeah, It's cool. I like it. It's good. It's fun. awesome. Yeah. It's really cool. And I'm thinking of that. I'm still thinking of that VPS box. I've been trying to get into boxing. I think that any time that you feel, how do I word this? Okay. Best way I can word this. If you and another guy are trying your best to impress a girl. Okay. And or a he, guy could be a guy or a guy, yeah, right? Yeah. Inclusivity. Then and he has something and he portrays something that you think makes her want him more yeah. like fighting if let's say he walks in the room and you know he this can is beat like the very shit toxic masculinity that's right no, but this is how i think this is how i think this is how i think if some big muscular <laughs> dude walks in the room and he's and i need to sit here and think all right this guy if he wanted to could kick my ass that is an insecurity but i feel like those insecurities you need to address anytime that there's something Anytime that there's a thing that you feel inferior in, mm. that's just a signal, in my opinion, that you need to work on that signal. Yeah. Or work on that insecurity. Sorry. Boxing is one of those things for me. Yeah. I, can't, I can't fight. As much as I go to the gym mm. and I work out and I try to be as strong as I can, mm. I've never taken any sort of boxing class. Yeah. So I think that there's like almost, like you said, it's very primal yeah. um, well, I think, I think, need to fight. Yeah. I think the great thing about there is that. But also with boxing, it's some. I don't know if this is true or not. I had a meeting a few months ago with someone when I was doing the boxing. Said uh, boxing was the fastest growing sport in the U.S. Oh yeah. Which it could be because all this influence of boxing has made it really, really popular. Right. But I think one of the reasons it is was during COVID, people like were getting really, people were getting fat, so yeah. staying indoors all the time. And boxing is like probably the most physically exhausting 
and strenuous sport yep. out there. You're probably right. Top three, probably. You're probably right because of the also the mental stress that you're under yeah. when you're fighting. But tw- I don't know if you've had done, you've never done it, but twelve. You know, if you're a professional boxer, if you're doing twelve rounds, three minutes each round in the ring with someone else just as heavy as you, who's just trying to beat the shit out of you. Yeah, that's exhausting. I so I think so many people have just done it for their health and their fitness. Yeah. Um, and then I think. For others, like once you become professional, I think with the celebrity boxing, they're shit boxers. They do it for the hype or for whatever. Yeah. But I think for these professional boxers, amazing boxers, some of the ones I've worked with, I don't know, Chris Eubank, Philip Hergovich, or whatever, they're, they're better boxers, but those are the ones I've worked with. <laughs> um, yeah. They don't think of it in terms of, I want to beat this shit out of this guy. Got it. They think about it so mathematically. Right, they're right. They're thinking right. about it as though, okay, He's just done this. What do I need to do now? But it's all so quick. It's a sport. And for them, yeah, it's just yeah. an art. It's just like, yeah. how do I react to this? What do I do? And I don't think they, I think they try and remove all emotion from it. That's a good point. I think you're, I believe you. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. But it's, I think if you and me were to get in a ring because we haven't done that much boxing training, it would yeah. be almost all emotion. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, that's a good point. And it's, yeah, when you get up to the top, you're right. It's very calculated. I think that this, the best boxers, sometimes you could tell the best boxers are the ones that don't look like boxers at all. Yeah. Because you know that they're not in there just swinging around. They're, like you said, very calculated and precise with he just threw this punch, I dodge, and then yeah. go from there. Um, yeah, sometimes it's not about throwing as many hits as you can, but preventing as many hits to get landed on you, like Mayweather. Yeah. That's Mayweather's whole game. Yeah, he's, yeah his movement is incredible. Yeah. So, boxing. Do you play soccer? I do, I do. Um, I feel like you're one of the few British people that call it soccer. I don't, I don't. You don't actually. Way, yeah, it's just like when I'm here, when I, I just, I'm bored of saying no, no, global football. Yeah. That's what, yeah. that's what I call it usually when I come to North America. Got it. Um, I, I do play. Yeah. I'm not very good. Okay. I play in London a lot. There's this amazing app in London where you can just, they, there's this company and they hire pitchers and they'll offer like, 22 spots to play on this pitch on the app so you're playing with 21 random people yeah and i play by i don't know why i was going to give you a specific location in london you won't know it but i play in london and i play basically very close to queen's park rangers the team mm-hmm. second division team but you know they get into the premier league sometimes and all their ex-academy players play there nice. and they all hate me because i'm rubbish <laughs> yeah. and i play with them it's like 21 really good players yeah and then I'm basically last pick. Whoever has me, then. Got it. Um, so I play with them a lot, um, but I'm not. I'm not a great player. I'm just. I love the sport. That's Big awesome. Fan. That's awesome. You spent the summer in Britain. Yeah, I was in London doing the boxing work for three months. Then yeah. I went uh, to Europe with with what is now my ex girlfriend, yeah. um, which was really fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a good summer. The weather in the UK was shit. Well, as always. Um, but I, I, oh, the weather this year, every weather was so weird. Makes sense. I, I saw the fires in Canada. That, that was yeah, that was a wild. In, same in Europe as well. Yeah. Southern Europe, Italy, yeah. it was like Sicily, South Italy is like going up to 50 degrees. Yeah. It's crazy. No, it's, it's yeah, I was, because I worked, I told you I worked at a concrete yard. Yeah. And you could smell the smoke in Orangeville. There was wildfires coming all the way from Alberta, traveling across three, four provinces it's from crazy. british columbia too but the ones the ones there were two big for, like from reading the news in europe which yeah. doesn't cover canada that often no there were two big like kind of uh fire seasons i guess okay it was the first one i remember seeing in new york yeah but that came from canada that came from and canada. did that come from alberta as well no that came from i think that came from northern ontario okay and then the recent ones came from alberta yeah i okay. i can't even remember what order it was I think Alberta actually kicked it off. I think they started. Yeah. And then Northern Ontario, all that smoke just went right down to New York City. Yeah. And it had like the worst air quality in the whole world or something. They had to cancel a Yankees game. Jesus. It was, no, yeah, it was wild. Oh, it's terrible. I, can, I forgot about that. Yeah, that yeah. happened this summer. That's horrible. But yeah. It's crazy. It's like, I, I don't, I don't, I mean, we're at U of T, it's a clever school. So the consensus on, I don't want to bring too much politics into this podcast, yeah, but the consensus on climate change is, like it's it's pretty reasonable. It's it's exists and we're yeah. sort of. Yeah. Whereas I just it's still crazy to me how some people just don't get it. 
Yeah, it's, it is. It is wild. I, I, I don't know if I. I don't fear it. That's the thing. Yeah. I think that it, there's a lot of people who, like, if you ask them how they think the world's gonna end, they're they're a lot of people under the the fear of we got this 12 year countdown before the world's over. Yeah, like, you hear a lot of that, and and I understand that climate change is very serious. I talked to a yeah. bay. Abe, who's on the uh, Climate Change Canada Youth Council, he's oh, pretty right. serious about okay. the whole thing, yeah. And uh, and he explained a lot of the points very well. It's the longest podcast we've ever made. Yeah. Um, and and it made a lot of sense, but I still don't think that fear is the right way to go about it. And I also I know this this sounds terrible, but at the end of the day, you just have to do your part. And it's such a huge problem that that. It's gonna. It's. I don't know how you fix it, really. Yeah. No, I, I. I agree with you. I agree with all those things. I just. I just. I just don't get the people who still don't like acknowledge it. Yeah. It's like, you know, as individuals, there's not that much more we can do. Like, I'm. I'm vegetarian. The reason that is is because I want to help cut down on carbon emissions or whatever. Um. But and I think you know, there's as an individual, there's not much. There's other things I can do. Maybe go to university in the UK and not take long distance flights. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like not that much I can do. Right. And I think it's all I can do really is acknowledge it as a person and kind of go, this is a problem that needs to be solved. And I just still find it weird that there aren't even people who can do that. Yeah. Um, makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's that I don't acknowledge it. I don't litter. Yeah. Um, I recycle. I mean, that's all basic stuff, but. Yeah, I, I also think I don't really understand it enough because it's a very intricate science. And yeah, like... It's quite complicated. It and is. I think that's probably one of the reasons like a lot of people... I, I don't want to be like biased against... But you know, like yeah. very, I don't know, middle of nowhere Americans. Right. <laughs> I feel like that a lot of the reason they don't believe it is because the education system is just really bad there. Right. In a lot of places in the middle of nowhere. Right. And they just find it hard to kind of wrap their heads around it. 100%. No, that's a good point, for sure. Um, I, what do you use summer as? For me, like, because I work the whole summer, mm. a lot of people use it to rest in between in between school years, mm. which is, which makes sense. But, like, when the school year is over, it, do you see summer as, like, the start of of something like do you see summer as the start of working in boxing or do you see it as more like the end of school and you get to chill for four months um so when when school finishes and i fly home i want four or five days off yeah but i get really bored Got it. so i just like when i don't have my mind kind of concentrating on something or focus on something i i, I just like i feel like the laziest most useless person ever yeah um so I, I don't care what it is as long as I feel like I'm doing something productive as long as I'm working or that's good even do like a summer course or something as long as I'm doing one of those things yeah I'm okay um so when UFT finished it was like I barely even gave myself time to rest I was just like four days off take the week a long weekend and then I'll go and do the boxing yeah and then after I did the boxing I went around with with you know for three weeks around Europe um which wasn't working but at least I was like doing something active yeah. I can't just be at home doing nothing. Makes sense. Yeah, no, me neither. That's the same way with the gym. If I haven't been to the gym in like three days, yeah. I feel like the weakest piece of shit <laughs> ever. Like, I, I, I don't know. I can't explain it, but I feel the muscles shrinking. I get all tense. Yeah, so I never go to the gym, so I'm used to that feeling. So I always feel like average. Yeah. That's what you see. That's the problem with going to the gym. You feel really great. And then exactly. you don't go and you feel like shit. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's all bouncing up and down whereas me i just feel consistently weak <laughs> i don't go to the gym <laughs> not bad that's not a bad explanation <laughs> but yeah no it's it's uh it's good once you get to that level it here's a good question actually yeah i've i don't i to this day i don't know this an answer okay what i would say i'll ask you oh god okay. if you could take a pill that made you disgusted by all desserts in the world okay would you take it all unhealthy food and only eat healthy food. Yeah. So like you took a pill and then from that point to the rest of your life, unhealthy food didn't appeal to you. Okay. It's a hard so my question. My answer is no. Okay. And I'm well, going to quote something by a British comedian. Yeah. But you all know him, Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Who's hilarious. He is. And he did a stand up on Netflix. And I, someone said like... Uh, you know, would you quit smoking and drinking to have an extra 10 years off your life? And he says, no. 
And the reason that is, is because if it was 20 to 30, if you could have 21 to 31 again, yeah, I would never eat pudding and I wouldn't eat food. I don't eat healthy food. Yeah. But I'd lose like 80 to 90. Yeah. That's sh- years anyway. Those years, I'm gonna, yeah, 100%. I'm going to have a terrible time. 100%. I, I don't want those. I mean, I do want those years, but yeah. do they outweigh enjoying my oh. meals and enjoy my food? I'm vegetarian yeah. anyway, which is yeah. probably like fairly healthy. Yeah. But I still enjoy my food. That's fair. So, no. That's a <laughs> that's a answer. good that's a good point. Yeah, no. I There's a there's a point in life where I think I was talking about this the other day. We were talking about the age where a lot of old people start to go into like long-term care. It's not even a retirement home. It's literally just you are in a hospital bed for the entire day mm. and there are workers who wipe your ass for you and all this stuff which I feel bad for anyone who has to go through that. But I honestly think if it was me, I would just go for elective suicide. So I wouldn't want to end out the last years of my life being like basically a baby, right? Yeah. I want to have a bit of sovereignty, a bit of my own individuality still. Um, I had this conversation over over the summer. It's like, you know, everyone has the so-called right to life. But only in some countries you have the right to death. God. I think that's why people are going to Switzerland to get themselves killed for these reasons yeah. to have like uh, assisted suicide. Yeah, and I know. I just I've always thought to myself that it should be legal. Yeah, in so many countries it's not. And at some points you're so you know that's really what you want to do. If you're feeling miserable, if you're feeling like you can't, uh, you know, you're 85 and you're just a burden or whatever. Maybe I, I think maybe you have, you have to do a few months of counseling or therapy to see if if you yeah. change your mind. But if you don't want to live anymore, I feel like that should be allowed, and you should be able to have this assisted suicide. So it's not painful and it's planned and controlled. Um, cameras, I gotta fix that. I was saying that thinking of my legacy as okay. a human being, as a person, I would like to go out as someone who is remembered for taking care of his family mm. and and providing for the people around him. I don't want to be, I never want to be a burden, especially if I was living with my wife and we were both really old. I wouldn't want her to have to take care of me in that sense. Yeah. That's, it, I don't know, it just kind of feels degrading. And maybe I'm ignorant mm. because I'm so young. And maybe if I were that age in that condition, yeah. well, if we, we if we had this conversation in I don't know fifty years, we'd yeah. probably have entirely different points of view. Right, we'd we, we'd see it differently. Yeah. Um, it just yeah, just right now, obviously at nineteen doesn't sound very appealing. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. I guess though on on. I I, st- I stand by my point and I agree with you, but I guess on the other, other kind of side, the older you get probably one of the amazing quality, like some of the amazing elderly people I meet, the quality they have, which makes them amazing is that they just learn to appreciate every new thing and everything still in life. Yeah. Loads. Yeah. Like when, you know, a lot of elderly people I, I find like in the UK, they can be quite traditional and conservative. Yeah. And when new things come out, they go, Oh, that's shit, f- that. it's, uh, yeah. whatever. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And the ones who I think are amazing are the ones who kind of go, wow, there's this new thing that's come out. Uh, I'm going to go get my 125th telephone. It used yeah. to be one which had a string and you would a landline. And now I've got this iPhone. And people who are basically always learning to appreciate new things. Yeah. And I think if you can do that, then you, know, you don't want to die. But yeah. when you do want to die, I think you should be allowed to do that as well. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. What was I going to say? Um... Okay, I want to know more about this construction thing, though. Yeah. What was the construction job? Oh, it was actually... You didn't explain that to me in that much detail. Yeah, so, I mean, I talked... I think I talked a little bit... Not really. I talked a little bit about it on the last podcast of Mm. how I love working in construction. Okay. I'm not actually, like, out there building anything. That was more... I had a first job at Home Hardware. You know Home Hardware? It's like a building supply store. Okay. It's Canadian. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know what it would be compared to in UK, but that, that stuff, stuff I uh, that was my first job in construction, and it was it was pretty retail. I was just working in the yard, loading mm. up uh, loading up customers and mm. lifts and stuff. But I think that working in that kind of industry, you see so many of these customers, a lot of these men that come in and and the work they do. It's it's 
very rough. It's very hard work. It's like right at the ground level of how everything gets made, whether it's your, like I said, the guys, I was selling wood to guys who are making fences, building houses, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And it starts, it starts there with those guys mm. who aren't really living the most uh, luxurious lives, so to speak. Um, doing a lot of the work themselves and, and with their hands, which I 100% respect at this university. They just finished King Circle construction yeah. there. I find it very interesting how you have thousands of 20-year-old kids walking around that construction site going to lectures and going to study yeah. to eventually use whatever those guys on that site are making. Yeah. So, so students will walk past and see these construction guys as lesser because these students are probably going to end up making more money than most of those guys who are working there. Yeah. But the, if the, if the construction guys didn't build whatever they're building, the students wouldn't even have a building to, to go to the lectures in. Yeah. They wouldn't have a lab to do their yeah. studying in. I guess, I guess what you have, I'd imagine is, you know, with some jobs you're not, you don't have like concrete output. You don't go, Oh, this, what I've done here, it's not it's not material stuff to show that you've done well yeah or you've reached your goals yeah with construction i guess it's obviously like very concrete material 100%. goals and that must be quite satisfying it, yeah 100 percent. and and yeah i mean like when you just look at the straight compensation i feel like they're like the construction workers at the very ground level aren't paid a whole lot mm. i'm not saying they should be paid any more than they are but the work they're doing is actually genuinely hard work that I really respect. I feel like hard work is a very interesting term. People use it very loosely, but I, I don't see studying at U of T as hard work really. Like no. th that might be a controversial no, I, take. I, I, I totally agree with you. It's not, I don't think it's controversial. Walking into Robarts where the weather is perfect and you're sitting in your in U of T merch writing in a notebook about whatever. That's the, I don't yeah. see that as hard work. I see the guys out there in the blistering cold in the snow building a damn laboratory for all these students i i, I totally agree that's hard work yeah. i yeah. think university is, like this should be a global consensus be students are the least hardworking people in the <laughs> yeah. world they they can be totally selfish they have no one to provide for exactly they have no you know and whereas the people in the construction it's physically very tiring but they also have you know, some of them have families to look after. Some of them yep. uh, first generation immigrants or yep. so, you know, and they've got a whole bunch of problems. 100%. Um, whereas the students, you know, they'll have some problems, but they're also students. They have, they can be as selfish as they want. More or less, not always, but, you know, more or less. And, yep. um, I, they're definitely in the group of people who live the easiest lives in the world, I think. Yeah. There, uh, are, there are people who you know, I'm not saying there are individuals who have, you know, who grew up in, in uh, some, I don't know, in Somalia and, yep. uh, and, and had to really work their, you know, work their hearts out to, yep. to get into UFT. And, you know, of course there are individuals, but I think as a general kind of demographic, yep. students have it really easy. <laughs> hundred percent. And I think it's good to admit that as a student, Yeah. because a lot of, I feel like if a lot of students heard that they get kind of defensive and think, no, I put in hard work. I'm not saying that they're not actually putting energy into the, yeah. into the school. They do hard work for where they're at in their life. Exactly. But in terms of the entire world and the entire, you know, as a demographic, it's just, I think it's important to acknowledge that we're getting it really easy hundred percent. and most people aren't. And I yeah. think that's important. Yeah, university is definitely a privilege. I do agree with that. That's why, yeah, as, as soon as it ends, yeah. I think there's going to be a very rude awakening for a lot of students, a lot of people yeah. who have been living in somewhat of a protective shield, what is what university is. Mm. I made a video during the summer. It was completely AI. I didn't even post about it on Instagram. It's my least viewed video on the channel right now. But it was basically a story of three groups of people that I believe are at university. Okay. So I take students, I categorize them into, into three sections. Okay. First group is the people who understand that they're here for four years. Okay. And they're going to work their asses off because as soon as, as soon as they're out of the shield, the bubble that is university. Yeah. 
life's going to be coming hard and fast. Okay. Okay. Kick the rest. I agree with that group. Right? Yeah. Second group, I think, also understands that they're in a, in a bubble, in a shield. They're here for four years. And although the outside world is going to be very difficult for them, hmm. they just take this as this is going to be the best time in my life. I'm going to live it up. Not necessarily try too hard or work too hard. Not a lot of these people at U of T, hmm. I will say. But I mean, other colleges. Yeah. They're just there to live it up, you know, party, have some fun. And then when they're done school, they're done school. And they're going to live the rest of their life working whatever job they choose. Okay. And it's going to be, they're just going to, I guess, suffer a little more in that yeah. part and of the third life. third category. Third category are the people who don't know they're in a bubble. I think the third category don't even understand the protective shield that they're in for these four years. Yeah. And they just think that life is going to be as easy these are the people who think life is hard yeah, in okay university. i get what you mean anytime i hear someone just overly complain and and stress about how difficult school is i feel like a lot of these people don't understand how difficult and that's, and the that's outside a, and that's a sad group that's the third group okay because i think i think actually i have a few questions for you but i'll tell you what i think after yeah i think uft there's a large proportion of people who are in a mix between group one and group three Group one and group Which two. might seem contrary. Okay. And the reason I say that is because I think loads of people at U of T work really, 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 really hard. Yeah. Which I think is in group one from okay. by what you're describing. Yeah. Yep. But I also think those same people think they work a lot harder than most people outside of U of T. Got and it. they think their lives are insanely hard and difficult and they're not. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, my questions were, what group are you in? What group am I Yeah, in? what group are you in? I love to consider myself group one. Okay. I love to consider myself, just the fact that I'm aware that university is an easier period of life. Yeah. And it's going to get real difficult once we graduate. Yeah. I think that a lot of students realize post, um, post undergrad that they, they took it for granted. Yeah. And that the working, the life of the working person is, is much more stressful than the life of a student. Hmm. Um, and and what like in terms of percentages? What is U of T made up as oh, in these good, groups? Is it like eighty percent group one or ten percent? I, I don't know. What, that's what a would good you question. say? If you had to more or less estimate, I think that there's group three. I think is the biggest. Okay. To be completely honest, I think that a lot of people don't realize how incredible it is to be in university. Yeah. And how safe you are. The safety that comes with being yeah. a student. Um, no bills. For the most part, for the most part, mm. no bills, no one to provide for, like you said, uh, very low responsibility. No, 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 not everyone. Not everyone. But most people, because I, I do like appreciate of that obviously individuals who, have of course, but we're generalizing. Gen yeah, generalizing. Um, Just don't want this to come out and go, oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Go on. No, no, for sure. I'd say probably 60% of people are in group three and then an even split 2020 for groups one and two yeah and not to say that just because you party means you're a group two I, you can party and still work your ass off and be very aware that's group one okay but i think the people who are only focused on having fun mm. that's group two okay so they're living up the four years they know once that's done then life's gonna be shit. yeah but they're fine with that okay and I guess you can be a mix of all the groups as well. Yeah, it there's like, there's you know, blurred lines. It's it's just a yeah, it's yeah. a nice story to tell. Yeah. I think I think it's I, th I like this concept. I think yeah. it's good. So that's uh, that's what I've kind of come to realize. How do you think that your approach, like, how are you seeing these new students coming in? Because you're second year. Second year, yeah. Second year. How do you see the the incoming class now as a second year? Because you were once that incoming class. Yeah. Last year. Um, I feel like second year is a very interesting position to be in when you're when you're trying to connect with the, the lower year? I'm not sure. I got here yesterday. So, um, <laughs> yesterday. Uh, I think, I don't know. First year was weird for me. Like, yeah. I really enjoyed my first year here. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as we mentioned this earlier, like in the UK, it's just very party-based university. It's going yeah. to the pub, drinking, whatever. So I kind of thought it would be that here. Yeah. But... I also appreciate that it wouldn't be exactly that, but a different variation, which is not all, it's not just going to the pub or any variation of that at yeah. U of T. Um, I didn't think it would be as intense as it is. As it is. Got it. Um, but I also thought I was a bit of an exception. I thought I was like 
I think I'm one of the few people who just totally missed exactly what UFT was. I think most people came in, especially if you're from North America, kind of knowing exactly what it would be like. Got it. The first years from what I've seen. I had I had two VPS people doing the, uh, you know, orientation club thing yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and they, you know, same every year. Excited for it. 100%. But also... Nervous. A bit nervous. Yep. Maybe a bit over committed sometimes. Got it. A bit too too into things got it um you know i think a lot of ufc people i think i think it's important to relax sometimes yeah i think i don't know in my head it's always been if you have a piece of work it's an analogy if you have a piece of work you can either do 10 hours and get like 70 percent. you can do 11 hours get 75 percent. but as every hour goes up the percentage that goes up gets smaller and smaller. 100%. So there's no, once you've done 15 hours, you're only going to get an extra half a percent every hour you do. What's the point? I completely agree. You can agree. spend those hours relaxing, socializing, yeah. going to the next VPS session. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Going for a drink. I, I don't know, whatever. And I don't think a lot of people at UFT realize that. Yeah. I think they just think, oh, I have to do as many hours as possible. Right. It's, uh, I'm going to get an extra 5% for every hour. That's not true. Right. You can eventually, it's not worth it. And 100%. you should just do other things. And, and I think it's possible to think like that and still get good grades. I agree. So I think that having that social side actually helps with grades. Because hmm. a lot of people, I mean, there are, there are machines out here, I won't lie. Who yeah, there are. Here, who, who international students who just lock down 20 hours a day and just crush it. But I mean, I said a lot of my mates as well. It's like <laughs> yeah. the friendship group I'm in here. It's like I sit down, so I got, like last year I'd go to dinner. And they go, oh, yeah, I'm going to be in, you know, robots until 3 a.m. And, and I just think to myself, fair play, but also f*** off. Like, it's <laughs> yeah. just it's too much. Just, yeah. You know, just enjoy it a bit. 100%. 100%. These guys are built different for sure. But as a general, as a general consensus, as a general rule, um, people need to socialize. Yeah, You need definitely. to have connection. You need to chill a bit, just yeah. a little. Um and yeah, like I don't, I don't personally believe in like burnout per se, but there are definitely people who, who don't have any balance and they get fucked over. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, you, so yeah, you need to be able to manage that. And I think having that balance, having a, a good positive, life in all all aspects, mm. actually helps with the grades too. Mm. For me. Yeah, it's the same with me. By the way, I, I just, yeah, I think I think there's definitely such thing as overworking. Yeah. And in the long run, it's just going to, yeah, it's a really boring cliche, but it's a marathon, not a sprint. You're right. I think it's just, yeah, I think it's important to socialize and have other aspects of your life. Agreed. And I, I, I've lived both experiences because hmm. I've lived the, the side where my social life was terrible. Hmm. I barely talked to friends and I was solely focused on getting good grades, which I got. I got the good grades, but the social life didn't exist. Yeah. And the other side, which was always hanging out with friends but the grades were shit. okay which one is better though the, the life that's better is obviously in friends. the middle but, well yeah obviously the middle but if you had to choose one or the if other if you had to have because both people i think struggle yeah i think you can't really enjoy your experience when you know your grades are ass mm. you can't because you're a u of t this shit's not cheap and you're not here to waste time like yeah. you're here yes to enjoy your time but you also are here for the degree but I'd much rather have that problem. I'd much rather have the grades problem than the social problem, mm. because because your your friends are gonna make you feel chill. Yeah. If you need if you need a what's the word? If you need an outsource, if you need just a place to go and you know get a good laugh, you can go do that with your friends and then think, okay, yeah, I'm fine. I'm relaxed. Let me buckle down and study. Yeah, I need to I need to get my shit together. Mm. But if your grades are in check, and even when you got that eighty five percent, you can't even look around and tell anybody. Mm. That's not a great experience. Yeah, I think that's harder. You have any final thoughts for our guests here, Theo? It's been a great episode. Yes, it's been a great episode. Um, I've really enjoyed being on it. I guess the one thing I would learn is that more than ever. You have to join the VPS. Message us. Give us a follow. Join the VPS 11. We're still looking for a few more players. Uh, when VPS Box comes out, buy tickets to watch it. Or, or ask me if you want to fight in it. We'll, we'll match make you. Um, but yeah, it's been really good fun. 
Awesome. Uh, I've never been on a podcast before. No. So it's it's been awesome. People will get to uh, know you now. And yeah, thanks for having me. More than they already do. Obviously, a legend here in the, the Victoria in, in, community. In the pool community. In yeah. the pool community. Yeah. Leading Victoria to uh, to a new a new space. Yes, exactly. A new social kind of. That's right. New culture. All right, man. Thanks for coming on. Hey, cheers. Uh, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was episode 19. Theo Sokol hit up VPS, and we'll see you next week. Peace out.